All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, webinar, uh, the second one in the series about the reinforcement learning in finance uh, from playing games to algorithmic trading. So we got started with uh, playing games, uh, admittedly a pretty simple game. So uh, we haven't endeavored into the world of the Atari 2600 games, um, the uh, paper about which I have mentioned in my introduction. And uh, there have been already in the first webinar uh, quite a few questions with regard to uh, reinforcement learning, Q learning applied to uh, finance and trading. And yeah, today we are going to make this step. So I want to do a review and I also want to um, show an, uh, an additional an alternative implementation of the algorithm, not using Keras and TensorFlow, but uh, simply quote unquote, um, uh, scikit-learn with the MLP um regressor this works as well and it's sometimes a bit faster even we don't have all the flexibility that we have with tensorflow this works as well and i want to use this as a review mechanism so that we go through another notebook which is basically the same um, as the one that i used with uh, keras tensorflow uh, but where we uh, use simply another package um, so you know that most of the code is based on AI and finance that I'm going to present and the use case is algorithmic trading. That's the primary focus to trade one instrument. Uh, so a trading bot that is able to go long and short, let's say with regard to one instrument, a stock or an FX cross or whatever. Um, so that's the background that we have. And here you see the resources. I've added here an additional link. Apart from that, the slide deck is the same as last time um, because it's a little bit more convenient uh, maybe Maybe if you don't want to clone the repo, uh, just to use the Google Colab link. Uh, I have added also like GitHub, why Hilpish, my account there, RL Finance is the GitHub repository. So when you click that link, Google uh, Colab opens uh, and then you can choose simply from the four notebooks. So I've checked them. They should all execute um, on Google Colab, but with a free tire, that's uh, basically a little bit slow, actually. So I noticed that it's much, much slower than on my uh, Mac um, M1. So currently I'm traveling, <laughs> I'm doing this from my Mac, um, uh, MacBook Air with the M1, but it's, it's still uh, as fast as my machine that I have back home with the M1. Um, yeah, in the cloud, a little bit slower, but nevertheless, it's, it's kind of completely convenient. A single click and you are good to go. Discord server should be clear and uh, would be nice if you follow also on Twitter. Haven't been too, too active there but uh, more will come on Twitter as well. So I don't want to go through all the different things anymore. You might recall that uh, success stories here, the basics uh, we've covered first, the stories themselves, and then the Atari uh, games, AlphaGo, um, which was a major breakthrough, then chess with Alpha Zero later on, right? And we have then uh, defined basic notions that we need, like environment, the state of environment, agents taking actions in such environments, uh, how we step forward in environment from one state to another um, state, uh, a reward for a chosen action and a certain target should be clear. Um, again, in finance, this might be a profit or a large return, average return, compounded return, continuous return, whatever you want to define there. So this is more for later. Uh, the policy represents what an agent will do when the agent is in a certain state and has a certain set of options. An episode is simply one game or one trading uh, period, right? And uh, we have covered uh, reinforcement, Q learning, reward function is important. And um, reward design is something, yeah, that is... Uh, sometimes i think more an art uh, than than a science uh, right to come up with a proper reward which lets the agent learn faster and then come up with better action policies um and the q learning involves uh yeah delayed re uh, delayed rewards which is kind of the major characteristic so looking forward into the future and not only having like the immediate reward <laughs> as i said for us human beings it's the same right when we have some uh, sweet chocolate in front of us we hardly can resist right um you know whether there is a punishment in the form of uh, a pound more next week uh, this is usually not what we take into account then uh, but the machines uh, behave similarly usually they are greedy but 
uh, we should uh, yeah, teach them to also take into account future rewards. Representation, usually in the form of a, a deep neural network, right? This is what we uh, choose here. The reason why, because deep neural networks are so good at approximation, at uh, representation. And then we do exploration, exploitation, replay to train, to update uh, the agent. So this is uh, everything that we have covered, right? And a few technical things, right? The, the uh, discount factor, epsilon, uh, epsilon decay in this context, so the, the uh, relationship between exploration and exploitation. So that's basically a quick, quick run, but I said I want to review this uh, based on code. So here I have um, um, used this to update the gist and I dive now into this uh, notebook. So I said I have only my MacBook, maybe uh, here and there I might uh, uh, put on my classes uh, or maybe I can simply zoom in a little bit more uh, right so uh, this notebook has basically the same structure and the same goal the same approach as the one that we had with O2 here Q learning with Keras and I just wanted to show that this also works with uh, scikit learn where we have the MLP requester which we can use uh, yeah, as a substitute and I promised already this might be a little bit faster. So the card pool environment is not uh, ah, discussed here in detail. So I simply go with the first one, the V0. And I use, as pointed out here, the MLP regressor. So basically, I don't need uh, this. This will be um, defined. Further down, I said there is uh, the block where I first, uh, ah, kind of like years back, uh, but still, I'm referencing it because I, I found it so useful given all the other information that I had. Uh, this was like the best explanation that I found after a uh, little bit of digging. So I still uh, reference it here. Um, so the structure above here is basically the same. So you, we wouldn't see any difference. I also called this DQL agent, where the major difference um, is to be found here is in the build model part, right? We now use MLP regressor and not like the sequential model of um, uh, TensorFlow Keras. We have hidden layer sizes here, where number of hidden layers and number of hidden units, we can choose the optimizer. Uh, the learning rate here is fixed to constant, um, and we fix the random state so that we have quite some reproducibility. It's much more uh, easy to, um, yeah, uh, come up with reproducible implementations here with the uh, scikit as compared to uh, TensorFlow. Uh, maximum iterations and the warm start simply says, well, that we uh, do and can retrain the uh, model, which is the default with um, TensorFlow Keras sequential model, but not here. And I do some simple random fitting so that the model is fitted and afterwards I can use partial uh, fit a little bit of a different approach. The act method is the same when you recall it, right? And the replay is also basically the same here. And there we might see minor differences with regard to the syntax that needs to be used with the one or the other. So for example, here we have this partial fit. This is related to uh, uh, warm start. So we don't reinitiate it when we do some training or replay here, right? Some learning. Uh, and the partial fit is that we simply say, well, this is not like the traditional supervised learning. We have all the features, we have all the labels in the training data set, and we do one step. Here we want to do it uh, incrementally, and this is uh, what partial fit is. Apart from that, uh, there's not that much of a difference, right? The rest um, yeah, seems to be basically uh, the same. We just have replaced the core, uh, and by core, I mean the um, here, the, um, the representation in general, the optimal action policy cannot be specified in closed form. So we need something else, right? Um, so we have approximate representations and what we use are neural networks in general. So for very, very simple cases, we could think in terms of some table or whatnot. Um, but uh, here we have the yeah, neural network. We could start with TensorFlow Keras and now we have, um, uh, we have uh, scikit-learn MLP Regressor. So that's the basic uh, change here. And now when we see this in action, it's pretty long here, right? Did I execute everything? It's so long. No, there's one thing missing. So 1500 episodes. And here I changed the base parameters from the class definition to two and 128. Finished true. This is with regard to the um, yeah, definition of success. 
when you reach an average of 195 or above with regard to carpool, then this is supposed to be a success. And we run it now for a maximum of 1500. So if it uh, reaches an average as pointed out of 195 or higher, then it stops the whole thing in this context. Yeah, that's what we have covered previously, right? So here, just a test, <laughs> a visualization. Once this is done, this is now going pretty slow. I had some um, other results and we don't need to wait it out. I just wanted to use this as a, um, again, as a um, refresher and a recap. The problem is that we now move towards the finance world. So today I'm not going too, too deep. The only goal that I have today with what I'm going to introduce now is that we have available, that we build a finance environment which behaves exactly like the open AI gym card pool environment. And I want to keep this yeah, with regard to the interface um, absolutely on the same level. So we will have, um, when you recall it, we have four different parameters that describe the world in carpool. And I will work with four parameters describing the financial market, the financial world. And I only allow for two actions, uh, meaning uh, for the carpool, it was like push it to the left, push it to the right. And here it uh, is simply to go long and short. I'm not really implementing uh, long and short. Uh, I simply have this as a prediction game saying, well, the uh, agent, the bot shall learn to predict whether the market goes up or down. But this is, of course, easily um, related then um, and transferred into some trading set where I say, well, if the prediction is upwards, then um i would go long and otherwise i would go short i mean this is kind of like um, pretty simple and straightforward so here in the beginning um standard imports and i now get back to my tensorflow keras world uh, this would work of course with uh, with the mlp approach that i've shown before so multi-layer perceptron from uh, scikit learn uh, uh, but uh, Keras gives us a bit more flexibility and we want to get more fancy later on. Uh, here we have it all um, yeah, available, uh, but currently it's... And we're all pretty straightforward. So setting the lock level for Keras to disable eager execution and importing it. So here on this machine, I have two points. 6.2 installed and uh, I use only standard stuff I don't think this was the same as last time let me check I'm not using no there is no drop out actually used so this could of course be um, used as a um, to avoid overfitting um, so but it doesn't hurt I mean to introduce it you know we have to take care of quite a number of uh, seeds here so random from Python uh, numpy random tf random the uh, environment has feet and the action space so now you might wonder oh if we are not using open air gym yeah but i said what i want to build what i want to show is a finance work maybe was also uh, that the training was slowing it down so I noticed a little bit late actually <laughs> uh, that uh, this was slowing down I hope you can hear me and everything is fine um, it's quite a bit of stuff going on here with the second display etc um, but um, I was just checking the, um, the other notebook. So I was uh, talking about the um, the setup that we have a finance environment, which should behave exactly the same way, right? Like duck typing. Uh, it's not open air gym, but it should uh, behave the same way. Now this has finished in between. Uh, and you see 408 was kind of like the number. So no 1500 uh, iterations in this context, three minutes. 
30 and you see this goes kind of like pretty straight up here with the implemented approach so basically i would be well, more satisfied with what i see here with uh, maybe when you recall uh, the variance variability here uh, from keras and we see that we get a perfect result here as well so mlp maybe a bit faster i found it slow i don't know when i checked it before maybe there was now it's a little bit too much going on here on the machine um with the training uh, etc but uh, you see this is kind of like a nice learning curve if you want to call it like that and it solved the card pool game perfectly 100 games with a average total reward 200 so perfect 100 times but you have it available, you can use a cool app, uh, you can download it and, and uh, try it uh, yourself, right? Um, this is all now at your fingertips. <clears throat> Excellent, sound seems to be back. Somehow the machine froze uh, for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, again, too many things I said that's almost as fast as back home, but the, the Mac Mini with the M1 seems to be uh, a bit more yeah, powerful to do all these things. Yeah, um, getting back now to the finance story, um, the setup should be uh, now uh, well known. We've seen uh, this uh, before with Cardpool and Cool Learning. The agent is the same. So this is my idea, right? You have this like with Alpha Zero, um, and with Alpha um, with Alpha Zero, they started uh, before with the Alpha Go versions, and they have had different iterations. Alpha Go, um, uh, ABC, but the, but they they used the name, right? Zedol, etc. Um, and then they moved towards Alpha Zero, and Alpha Zero now saying, well, this is not only for Go, Alpha Zero can also play uh, chess and shogi. And this is a little bit the idea. Of course, we are here on a completely different level as compared to chess or the game of Go, right? Um, this is uh, for sure something else. Uh, but still, we have the same deep Q learning agent, right, that we can walk through again rather quickly, gamma, hidden units, uh, optimizers, uh, the learning rate is fixed, and this double under init method, right, um, um, is as before. So even when we had like MLP, uh, this looked basically the same. So there was the idea I simply replace the heart of the operation, if you like, the core, uh, but now we are getting back to the Keras world uh, sequential model, just two hidden layers. So here I'm not allowing for more hidden layers or less hidden layers. I fixed it too. The only thing that I allow here is uh, the number of hidden units. By default, we have um, uh, what do we have? 24, right? 24, and the rest basically is the same, right? Here we have uh, uh, the act method looks the same, right? We have the replay. And you see here, that's what the one difference that I had at the before with um, with scikit learn the MLP regressor. Uh, we have this partial fit, right, to do the incremental fitting here. This is simply by default that we can do the um, this partial fit, right, if you want to call it that way, uh, because we work here just with a single state action reward pair, right, not pair triple in this um, context. Right, so this is by default it's the same whether we have some supervised learning where we have, I don't know, 10,000 uh, feature and label rows or just one here, right? One set of um, features and uh, one label only. So uh, I pointed out in the previous uh, webinar that this is what makes it kind of slow, this incremental training, um, because course when you do this for 10,000 at the same time as something else then when you do it 10,000 times sequentially right but again it's the same agent that we had before maybe here and there there might be some numbers change uh, the learning is the same the output is the same right uh, here with regard to finish this is still what is from before but here there won't be any finish uh, because in this setup now when we applied the same DQL agent now to um, the finance environment um, then 195 has no meaning so um, i explain what kind of like the goal is uh, in this context so i will turn this off but i left it in just to uh, illustrate that's indeed the same um, 
agent and here yeah we have the testing where we say well now let's check uh, with the optimal policy only no exploration anymore uh, just exploitation of our optimal policy represented as the deep neural network um, and nothing else in this context so after this uh, intro let me see again <laughs> i didn't execute that uh, line but now everything should be executed the finance environment so what do i do here um there is um there is um the observation space which i have shown um as a yeah class embedded class of the open air gym environment and here I simply mimic uh, what I've shown before. So the only thing that I give back here is the shape, and that's kind of N, the observation space. So this is four, right? We call box four and two actions, four and two. These are the two major numbers. The action space now, we have a seed for the action space, and we have a sample method, and we also have the number of actions. So it's a, it has two more methods. Uh, but this is just like to mimic uh, exactly the API uh, so that the agent, which I haven't changed, is able to interact now with a finance environment, right? And now we get to the finance environment. Let's have a closer look here. So I work with uh, some data set now. It's historical data, um, um, which is available on my server. Um, maybe I can show you this because otherwise you might wonder. Many of you have followed my program, for example. Um, know this. Let me see. I should be in the right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This takes always a bit here with Jupyter Lab. When I open this here in Jupyter Lab, I see the. Um, yeah, the CSV representation here is a nicely formatted table. Uh, the first column is the dates column. Then I have up here the headers, date, Apple, Microsoft, Intel, Amazon, Goldman Sachs, SPY, SPX, uh, Wix, Series, Dollar, Gold, and two gold ETFs. And this is a time series which starts at the beginning of um, 2010 and goes until the end of um, 2019, 10 years. So here is like the first day of 2020. And you see, it's kind of incomplete here, but we are only uh, going to work with single columns anyways, and there might be some drop in A during the import. But basically end of day closing prices for some, I don't know, 12 names, 12 instruments. Here's from, um, from Repinitive, so RICS, uh, right, as instrument code is what you see there. And this is what I'm going to use as a fixed data set. So this is, of course, completely simplified uh, in this context. So I need to pass in a symbol and I can define features. And here I keep it pretty, pretty simple. Um, um, but I nevertheless have, uh, let's say, one option, uh, namely between the price level or returns that I can use as features. Observation space. Um, can imagine we now go with four as before with carpool action space two and i now define here a, a break condition in the form of a minimum accuracy so i say well if the accuracy of the agent for one episode drops below 74.5 percent then the agent lost the game like with carpool right there are certain conditions physical in nature right, which says well you lost uh, the the pole dropped uh, not successful and this is what i want to mimic here and i measure the uh, uh, the accuracy i give the agent a grace period right if you have the first two uh, uh, incorrect right you're at zero percent so we need to wait for i don't know 15 20 10 minimum uh, and then calculate the minimum accuracy right um, so that's the idea here uh, the data is retrieved that i've shown you before and from the data i extract um, the lock returns and my labels, it's like the action, the prediction, here is simply the direction of the market. And the market is then one instrument that I pick from the data set. 
so get state returns the current state so we have you can think of it we have like a fixed window like the data set fixes it start and end right and then we move four price points a time forward like a rolling window everybody uses pandas rolling window right like rolling mean let's say um, that's the same idea. We have this rolling window where we start with the first four and then the next four and then the next four, but rolling when we step forward here, end of day data, one day, another day, but always four lags, if you like, are used. And the lags can be price or the lags can be returns. So here I provide the state, the next state, the next state, the next state. See it here, it's simply a pass, <laughs> there's nothing said. And here's the reset method. You recall uh, with the OpenAI gym environment, we had this reset method. There was some randomness included, right? The, the pole position and the card position was not always the same. There was some randomness included. Um, here, we don't have any randomness yet. Later on, we might include something like this, but the total reward is set to zero, ac accuracy is set to zero. Um, here I start at a certain bar, right? And I need a minimum value, like if I have four um, lags in analogy to the card pool, then I go with four. And what is now a step? I take an action, right? And here it is checked whether the action is correct in terms of like, again, it's not really an action, it's, it's more like a prediction game, if you like, right? The agent shall predict whether the market goes up or down up is a one down is a zero um, and if it is correct then there is a reward of one if it is not correct there is a reward of zero so pretty simple like with card pull just a plus one or i mean with card pull when you lose uh, you die immediately so to say we uh, calculate the total reward we move the bar one forward and we calculate the accuracy here right so then we have a couple of break conditions. When we reach the end of the data set, well, we are done, right? You can you could consider this uh, a success. It is considered to be a success, like with the 200, right? When we have a data set with a thousand data points and I reach the final point and I haven't uh, broken any of the other um, conditions here, like the accuracy dropped below 47.5% or whatnot, um, then, um, I'm successful, right? But nevertheless, the game ends at the end of the data. Uh, whenever I have uh, a success or reward of one, I'm not done. I can do another prediction. Um, if I'm wrong and the accuracy is below my threshold, right? And I'm like 14, also 10 bars in, uh, then I'm also done. And there might be some uh, leftover cases where, which I said two faults. Get the state info also to mimic exactly the API, simply an empty dictionary. Um, and I return state, reward, done, and info. So this is something that you should recall from um, the, um, the, the carpool environment. These are the four elements uh, that we get there. So just looking here for a question. I told you when I look uh, to my left, Inside, uh, there's a question with regard to Alpha Zero, Alpha Go for trading. Um, yeah, <laughs> no worry. <laughs> I shouldn't worry about the answer. Um, yeah, um, I was thinking, I once pointed out um, that Google, with all the technology, that they, they should be able to come up with like the um, at least artificial um, financial intelligence, something like a yeah, super human financial intelligence, and to make gazillions of money. and. Um, I think it was on a panel and somebody pointed out that uh, Google can make more money with the stuff that they do and, and instead of like uh, going to the markets and try to trade. I'm not sure about that. I think with uh, what they have come up with, if they would put the power and the brain, uh, so the brain power, the compute power and the algorithmic power behind trading, I think there would be something in it. And if they do it or if they test it, check it, or I don't know, um, they probably don't talk about it. I'm not sure, but uh, I think it would be something that can be kind of uh, straightforwardly i don't know if easily but straightforwardly adjusted to uh, accommodate like a financial environment you just need to get um, the 
API correct, but this shouldn't be the biggest deal, in particular not for a company like Google or DeepMind. Yeah, speaking of finance environment, we now have our finance environment together. So this is not the most sophisticated one, uh, but it's also not that long, right? We don't have that much code here, um, but nevertheless, it behaves, hopefully, <laughs> same way as our open AI gym environment. So, um, yeah, let's see how it behaves. I, I'm just talking about it abstractly, but we can check it here. Um, I instantiate the environment and maybe let me get started here with a euro yes dollar as the feature. So I said up here symbol and feature. So this is uh, plural, um, but it refers to like the four legs, right? I can change between price and return, but always I'm going to deal with four like here, the observation space four. This is what I'm going to deal with. So let's get started with the instantiation. Now, given the uh, code, the setup, the data file that I've downloaded here manually is retrieved in the backend and some data preparation has been done. And when I do um, and reset here, you see that I get now the output. I get four different prices, right? <laughs> it's, uh, interesting no i just wanted to say where we're coming from but uh what i am doing here so i didn't emphasize this i normalize the data set here throughout the place so i i don't work with the the um with the regular outputs i normalize uh, the data set uh, that i return right so the whole if you like the whole data set is normalized and uh, we uh know Kind of like uh, that's a stylized fact that neural networks work much much better when you have normal like Gaussian normalization or, or Z score uh, normalization is used here. So these are not the real exchange rate values, right? This is something normalized. So I can sample here from the action space. This looks and behaves the same as with the carpool environment. So when I do this a bunch of times, I only get zeros and ones randomly. Um, chosen. And when I now have such a random action, let's say one, and again, action, we are still like at the at the transition in terms of, um, it's not really an action, it's a prediction game, right? More like a, a quiz, right? Uh, dear bot, what do you think? You see like these four prices, uh, normalized prices, what do you think? Will the market go up or down? <laughs> so that's... Uh, that's uh, the idea here. And again, the then transition to some trading setup going long or short is not a difficult one. So I take the action, I do the prediction and what is happening. I get here the um, next step, right? So the whole thing is moved one step, one bar internally forward. Um, here is a plus one, there's a false. And see here, so a bool, um, an integer, a bool, and a, an empty dictionary. That's basically the structure. And now comes the time of our uh, card pool agent, the DQL agent here. Um, I said gamma to 0 0.5. I comment on that. And um, Keras optimizes RMS prop. You can try it with. Um, we can try it with uh, Adam as well. And let's get started. So I hope that the machine is not <laughs> now uh, freezing again. So I'm just checking for some questions. Ah, I said we have to chat on Discord, but they're still, right? <clears throat> yeah, there's a question. What, what are the four features? Um, it's basically, qualitatively just one feature it's the price the normalized price but these are four lags so this is just like we provide a view on the market for the agent of four lags at a time so if we are today or let's assume we have um thursday night um like today is thursday and let's assume we have thursday night market has closed then we provide the agent with four numbers the closing price today yesterday Tuesday and Monday. And the game is now for the agent to predict tomorrow's market direction, whether the market tomorrow, given these four prices, goes up or down. Right. And translated to investing, you would say, well, if my prediction is up, I would go long. If it is um, short, I would 
uh, if it is uh, down, I would short. So here we have now 300 episodes, not too many. Uh, the, uh, the final total reward is 2511. And indeed, the data set has a length of 2511 um, data points um, that are used here. So meaning that indeed the maximum was reached here for the agent and that the agent reached the very end of the data set. So the average, on the other hand, is just like 750, but we know epsilon here is an important factor. And we see that still um, some 22% of the actions um, are exploration. So are simply randomly taken. Um, I mean, this is like when you when you would have a, an, an algorithmic trading program or a, an algorithmic, uh, yeah, not a trader, yeah, some, some trading bot, and you would say, well, 25% of the time, choose some random position, probably not the best thing to do, but we can still go and test it. And what is about testing? Testing now means, as we recall, that we um, completely exclude exploration. It's just exploitation. And we see here the results. Oh, it's like mixed. It's going up kind of quickly. All these values are averages. And these are, this is like the cubic um, regression for the averages. Uh, and then it goes up again. So we can give it 300 more iterations. So this will be a warm start. So it doesn't start from scratch. It starts where it finished with the neural net. And now it trains like, front. but what we now need to, um take into account is that the agent is trained over and over on the very same data set so there's already the the one major difference um, to the card pool environment for the card pool environment every reset gives a different starting point right that's uh, different here so we always have the same starting point we have like a fixed a fixed um a data set and we simply repeat the game and the game and the game right this is like i don't know playing a game of or trying to solve a labyrinth game right we say the labyrinth is fixed um it's maybe more interesting to train an ai agent on a setup where the labyrinth changes all the time and uh, the agent learns general strategies but this is not where not where we are yet right? we will get to that uh, here it is simply like one thing and we expect the agent first as a starting point to solve the one one thing based on the fixed data of course i could then replace it with another data set etc right uh, here it's just the one data set which is your yes dollar in this uh, case and you see the agent improves so the average is now climb uh, so slowly but surely obviously so exploration just five percent oh this is on the test data set that's pretty bad um but here now towards the end it improved quite a bit but i can tell you already that this is uh, to a large extent due to the fact that we are working with price data um sorry i want to just iterate this uh, once more on price data and not on returns data right so let me quickly Check here. There's something. Okay, okay, no. Oh, there have been some posts. Um, okay, but not questions in this uh, context. Yeah, there's another question with regard to the features. Um, typical question, why can't we provide different uh, features here, such as indicators? This will be one of the next steps. So to feed the, um, to feed the agent, the trading bot, with yeah, typical financial features like indicators. Let's say something as simple as a simple moving average or uh, some momentum um, um, values, uh, indicators, or um some related to uh, volatility or rsi or bollinger bands or whatever you might come up with uh, of course this can be added and this will be added you see here this is q learn fin underscore one and in one of the next notebooks um, we will add more meat to it in terms of um in terms of uh, giving it uh, different uh, features in this context but here Again, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And this means for us exactly the same way, exactly the same setup 
that we have had uh, for the carpool game, right? So while this is still working, so towards the end, it's now slowing down a bit. Um, one of the major changes um, that I can do here is instead of like the price, price as feature, I can also now go with R. So lock return S feature. So this is still running. Let's see. Uh, we are closing in, but you see the average now is, uh, it has dropped now again. So this won't be that, that good. So we don't need to wait this out here. Um, therefore, let me now reinitialize this environment here. So now we see that we have returns, normalized returns, meaning that we now have negative values and positive values, obviously, not only due to the normalization, but from the outset, right? We have negative and positive returns. So the data set is different. And usually you would train a machine learning um, algorithm or a neural network, a deep learning algorithm anyways, on returns instead of price data. So this now has different numbers, but it works exactly the same way, right? Um, and uh, I said before, there is one major difference. So it always starts with the same first values. So uh, when I do reset here, it gives me always the same thing. So there is no randomness. That's a difference to the card pool environment. And I said, I comment on this, that gamma is now set to just 0 0.5. And why do I do this? So let me maybe um, simply So let me maybe simply start this so that we can use the time in between. Yeah, why do I set this to a half? Yeah, in Q-learning, the basic idea I, I emphasized this before is that we not only take into account the current immediate reward, but also the future delayed reward. We discount it, admittedly, right? It's not on the same level as immediate reward in general, but nevertheless, we include it. And the idea is that in many, many circumstances where uh, Q learning agents are so good, like chess and Go, right? It's not only important what your current move, let's think in terms of chess. For me, it's much easier because I pointed this out. I've now played Go uh, for chess. When you make a chess move, it's not about this very move, right? It's about uh, positioning and, and uh, strategy and then control of the center and, and attack lines, etc. So there is much more stuff involved, which is important later, right? So you're not only concerned with like the very next move, but rather with like moves going forward. And therefore, um, you need to take into account like the future delayed reward, which you discount. Um, this assumes that you have influence on the future, but here with our simple setup where we have some, where we have some um, fixed data set, the agent doesn't influence the future. So that's another um, yeah, problem, I would say, in the analogy here. Technically, the finance environment behaves in the same way, but we have a fixed data set. So the agent, no matter what the agent does, like a thousand times up, 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 a thousand times down, down, down as a prediction, it doesn't change a data set, right? And therefore, the delayed reward is, to be honest, um, here, not really important. Only when we later on um, have a different measure, like uh, accumul accumulating, for example, profits, um, getting the highest return, for example, right? then um, this becomes more uh, prevalent. But still, it lags here. This analogy lags. Technically, it's the same, but the analogy that I, the agent can influence um, the environment is not um, given, right? And now we see that this agent, which was trained 300 episodes, is for three iterations perfect. But this is not a surprise. Uh, I can do now 30 or 300. If it is perfect on one, it is perfect on all the others because um, it is the same data set. <laughs> With Cardpool, we have different starting points, like the whole game plays out differently every time. Here, it's the same thing. Once I have, you know, once I know the way out uh, of a labyrinth, uh, I know it. I, if I don't forget it for whatever reason, um, I can uh, solve it every time. 
And you see here, the average wasn't kind of like um, so, so great, but for the game now, for our static game, it uh, has solved it perfectly. Um, but it's just the one, one thing, right? Um, given that we are now working with returns, uh, what can be done? For example, you can have your trained agent, which you uh, let then interact, for example, with another time series from which you derive the returns and then normalize the returns, right? With regard to price series, I don't think that it would make sense, but the returns, and that's the basic idea. If there are patterns in the returns and the agent learns these patterns, maybe probably, I don't know on which side you are, uh, you can transfer what the agent has uh, learned to some other thing. So meaning that, for example, you um, you train such uh, an agent on, let's say, the Apple stock, and you then let it trade, at least you test it maybe on Microsoft or uh, Meta or whatever uh, you want to do it. But you see here, the, the same TQL agent, which was able to solve the um, card pool game perfectly, uh, the MLP agent had a better performance, and was uh, quicker to train, uh, can be applied, can be deployed here to a finance environment and can learn to trade. Admittedly, it's a pretty simplistic environment, but as we go, uh, we will add more twists, more features, and by features, I mean it in general, uh, uh, but also specifically, more narrowly, uh, machine learning, deep learning features to the story so that uh, we get a more realistic environment. So, of course, natural extensions here would be um, to uh, change the number of lags, right? Four, maybe eight, maybe 12. Uh, maybe I can use price plus return information. Maybe I can use uh, return plus whatever, right? I mentioned a few features before, uh, indicator one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, this all works. I simply need to adjust uh, or keep it flexible, the, um, the, the structure of the neural network. And then uh, I can do the same trick, but with a more realistic uh, environment. And uh, from there, I can take it in multiple direction. And one of the other things that uh, need to be added is to make the data set a bit more realistic. So. Um, there are a couple of approaches we can think in terms of Monte Carlo simulation, uh, for example, where we train the agent um, on, let's say, a thousand different price paths, uh, for example, to learn about mean reversion, whatever. So these are all topics that I'm planning to cover in later um, webinars, but we have done the first major step from playing a game to trading in a market and learning to predict the market. And at least in this particular run here, um, the agent got it perfect. And again, three is just for illustration. One would have been enough because this is now reproducible over and over again. There wouldn't be any surprise in this, um, in this context. Uh, uh, there's a question. Uh, I have used both a price and uh, return here. There's a question with regard to why I'm using these. This is just to get started. Uh, yeah, very simple. So, um, although I said before, it's well known you should use um, stationary uh, time series data in order to do your regression or your deep neural network training. For example, uh, price is something that most people can relate to in terms of like every day trader does some chart analysis and, and people usually when they look at charts, they look at prices and they hardly ever look at returns, right? Uh, maybe this is a secondary um, um, information set that they take into account. Um, but said here, I would usually uh, work uh, with the returns in order to predict uh, the next day's return. So trying to capture potential patterns in the return structure to predict uh, the next movement. This would be um, the idea. Yeah, more to come in this context. This was my plan for today to, to get this uh, through this uh, major step. Um, and there's a technical one. Maybe we can discuss this offline and I would uh, recommend that we do this in the in the Discord chat, because the chat here in um, in uh, GoToWebinar simply gets lost, um, and we cannot keep up the discussion about these uh, technical topics or any other topics to this end. 
after the session has finished. So therefore, it would be better to have uh, the chat and the questions all in the in the Discord chat. So that sense, let me just do a bit of house cleaning here. Um, data set downloaded. Maybe I can also push this. It's not that large. This data set and uh, in that sense, this is what I wanted to show you today. Just to find a final check with regard to the questions that you might have here. Um, um, there is, yeah, there is a chat channel and the Quant staff Discord uh, server, which is supposed to have. And I've also um, put all the links to GitHub repository to um, the um, yeah, Colab link, so to say, to work with the uh, Jupyter Notebooks um, in Colab from the repository. So there is a channel called chat, and this is what is uh, supposed to be uh, the major exchange. All right, in that sense, I wish you happy reinforcement learning for finance now. And maybe you have already quite a bunch of ideas uh, which you want to implement based on the framework that you have available. And that's kind of straightforward. It's not that much work kind of like to add something else and to adjust it from, I don't know, four uh, legs to eight legs, uh, for example. Yeah, give it a try, play around with it. I think that's the best way to um, get into this exciting field. In that sense, I'll see you in the next webinar. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.